Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel Current Chapter. My name is Dani and today it's time for the first full I'll Crave Book and Box video. So let's talk about books. In the first video of the series that I talked about the book The Kingdom of Bad by Mary Lou, I call that the 0 0.5 in the series because I wanted to wait to see if I'll create would be able to go back to the schedule of shipping the boxes in time, let's say, but I, like, I totally understand that they can't. And I adapted it a little, a little bit so that the series can still work and we can still talk about the books. So my original plan was to do a review of the book that came in one month and show you the box of the next month, which would include the book that I'm going to be reading next. But that's not gonna work exactly like I planned, because I don't have that second box yet. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to review the book that came in April's box and show you what came in that box as well. And the same when the May's box arrived. It's already on its way. It should be here in probably a week. I don't know. The box that I'm going to talk about in this video was called Full Moon Magic and it was from April. It arrived in the beginning of May. I read the book in May and I'm gonna show you everything about it. So before let's start with the actual box, right? That's that's more fun. The book that came in the Full Moon Magic box was Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy. I'm going to tell you all about it, uh, synopsis, my thoughts, what it's about after I show you all the other items. This is one of my favorite boxes that I received from Outcrate because all the items are useful and uh, some of the others like they sent a deck of cards a few times and I can I don't play cards I don't even know how to display it well and it was not even a fandom that I was part of so like that's not useful for me but this box I really really loved so the first item that here it's here on the top is a jigsaw puzzle that has Lupin's uh, character and a very very beautiful illustrated uh, print and I started to make this puzzle but I was sitting on the floor and it was hurting my back so I stopped I didn't finish it but I tried to keep a lot of it on the box it's still like assembled for, for when I did it again but it's so beautiful it's 300 pieces and it's such a cool item the next item that came in the box was this tote. Let me open it for you. It says, the moon is a loyal companion. It's very, very pretty. Uh, this one was inspired by the Shatter Me series. And I already used this tote. I already had to wash it because it spilled something. I don't even remember what it was, but I already even had to wash it. And it still looks good. The designer of the bag is Unlucky Design. And yes, inspired by Chatterby. The next thing here is, it came in this gorgeous little box. It's a gorgeous little bracelet. Look at this. This one is inspired by Winterwood and it was designed by the team, the Alcray team. The next item came again in a very beautiful pouch that's so, totally reusable and has a quote by Oscar Wilde. It says, a dreamer is one who can only find his way by moonlight. And it's so gorgeous. And I'm gonna open it. Let me put the box on the floor. Look at this. I can't wait to put it on my bookshelf. I'm probably gonna put it like right here because it's so pretty. It's gonna look so pretty. And I just have to make sure the cats won't destroy it. <laughs> but I really love it. And this one was inspired by the moon, I guess. It's not a specific book, probably just Bone Crier's moon. And both the pouch and this were designed by paperback bones. And the next item that came in the box was this notebook. Uh, it also has a quote by Oscar Wilde, which says, with freedom, books, flowers, and the moon, who could not be happy? And it's such a pretty design with the Alcray thing on the back. This again, not inspired by any book, a specific book, but the artwork is from Kim Becker Design. And I also already started using it. I was practicing lettering and 
I already used a lot of the pages in this notebook, so it was very, very useful. And the last item that came in the box was this pin. She's so gorgeous. It is inspired totally by Bon Cardi's Moon. Now that I read it, I totally see it. But it's also just a white owl and it's so pretty. We also have the author's letter and the little leaflet that they sent with information about the Instagram challenge, uh, some things about the author, some things about the designers of the items. It also shows the difference between the original cover and the Alcray cover. And this one, the Alcray is more blue and they kind of zoomed in the characters a little bit more. This is the original and it's much more dull <laughs> than the Alcray one. I really like what they did there. And the next box theme is going to be Rebels with a Cause, which is the May box. And every box is going to come with a graphic novel from Oni Press. So it's going to have two books in one. I'm going to have to read the two books to do the next Alcray book and box. So the actual book, like I already mentioned while they changed in the cover, it also has this weird color in the sprayed edges. I really don't like it. I don't know if it was supposed to be gold, but it's not gold. It's not shiny. It's just like this weird yellow. It's signed twice for some reason. I don't know. It doesn't have anything on the hardcover but it's this grayish color. But let's talk about this book now. I buddy read this with Natalie from One Sleepy Reader. I'm gonna link her channel in the description. She'll probably talk a little bit on her wrap up about this book as well. And this tells the story of the criers who are women, a group of women who is in charge of ferrying the dad to either heaven or hell. Every month on, the, on New Moon, they have to sing the song with this magical flute that attracts the dad so they can like point them to the right gate. In the story we have Elise who is the daughter of the leader of the Bone Criers and who will become herself the leader when her mom dies and she still has to pass her rite of passage which for every Bone Crier is to kill their one true love. And we also have Bastian who is the son of a man who was killed by a Bone Crier because that man was the Bone Crier's one true love. And we also have Sabine, who is her best best friend, they do everything together and she still also hasn't done her rite of passage. One very interesting thing about this book that it starts right in the first chapter with Sabine and Elise is that the bone criers have to wear animals' bones, like a necklace or something like that, to get a grace from that animal. So for example, if they kill uh, very strong animal, they will get very strong when they are wearing that bone. So each of the farriers can wear three bones, so they have to choose those animals and choose which graces they would want so they can pick the animal that could give that to them. It's very interesting to see how Sabine deals with that because she, first of all, she's a vegetarian, she doesn't like killing animals, she doesn't imagine the possibility of killing a human being, and she just doesn't want to do that. She doesn't want to kill the animals. She doesn't want the grace. She doesn't want to be a bone crier. She doesn't care about any of that. But she's part of that community and she's kind of led to be that person. And she helps Elise when Elise is, is hunting for her animals. So they hunt together, but Sabine never kills the animals. She's kind of like just helping make sure that Elise is not gonna die. I'm not gonna say any spoilers, don't worry. But right in the beginning, Bastian kidnaps Elise because he wants revenge on the bone criers and he wants to kill a bone crier. But stuff happens that instead of killing her, he ends up kidnapping her. And then Sabine wants to rescue her and there's a lot of stuff going on with the bone criers. Because of what he did, there's a risk that the dead will not be able to, will not get ferried. So there's of the law that starts going on here. We hear from uh, those three point of views, so Elise, Sabine, and Bastian. And one thing that I didn't like a lot about this book was that Elise and Bastian's point of views sounded very similar to me. I was pretty much in every chapter from one of them, I had to check who was talking because it's all in first person. And I just wasn't sure who was talking because they're, they're together for most of the book. 
from when he kidnaps her onward, his, they're always kind of together. So I, I often didn't know who was, whose chapter I was in. But that was something that I didn't like so much. But Sabine has a very distinct voice that I really liked following. She makes a lot of bad decisions. But she's a teenager and her best friend was in danger and her friend's mom was not taking it very seriously. So I understand why that she was doing what she was doing. Still was very annoying seeing what she was doing. But I really liked her character. But it got to a point in the middle of the book for me that it was not that it was slow. I don't think the book was slow at any point. But a lot of things were not making sense. Why the characters were doing what they were doing, I understood their motivation, but I felt like they, are, they were not working towards that motivation in a logic way, logical way. So that bothered me a little bit, and I thought that I wouldn't like the book anymore because like this, is, this just doesn't make sense anymore for me. But the ending of the book was so much fun. I had so, so much fun. Uh, reading the last few chapters and I really want to see what happens next. I really want to pick up the sequel now Even with what happened in the middle because I, I thought it was a little bit unnecessary the way that it happened it was a little bit too dramatic and again, why were they doing that that way? But the ending made up for it and I really really loved it. So I think I gave it 3.5 four stars uh, for four stars on Goodreads for sure and I really want to pick up the sequel. We meet a new character also uh, in the middle of the book that's probably going to be more important in the second book. And I'm very curious to see what this character is going to do. I don't know. At this point, I'm just trying to make you curious to read it, right? Let me know if you're ready. Let me know what's your favorite item from the box. And I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed hearing more about the Outcrate book and the Outcrate box. If it was not clear, I really recommend this book. Remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel to see more content from me. And thank you so much for joining me. Bye!